Welcome back to the June 2010 Regents. We're on question 32 and we're going to jump right in. The diagram below shows the magnetic polarity preserved by minerals within the bedrock of the oceanic crust near the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Letters A, B, C, and D represent locations on the ocean floor and bedrock. All right, so uh, we've got here, we've got the mantle below the ridge. The ridge itself, we're being told, is right here. And we got a key for polarity down here. The most recently formed bedrock is found at location. Well, we know that the new stuff is going to come out right at the ridge, and it's going to get older as you move each side away from the ridge. So that's letter C, which is answer choice three. Just keep in mind, right, that the it does get older as you go away from the ridge, and that you should be able to match the patterns on one side of the ridge to the patterns on the other side. That's another very common regions type question. 33, we got a diagram below that shows a laboratory box used to demonstrate the process of convection in the atmosphere. And we've got a candle burning inside of it. Well, we know that the air is going to be warmed by the candle and show it should be moving upwards due to its lower density. You see number one and two both show that, whereas three and four, we've got these downward movement of air. So it's got to be either choice one or two. Well, we're looking for convection, right? And so convection, we've got circular movement and that's what's going on in one, right? As this hot air is being pushed out of this tube, new air is going to come in to fill its place, and that's what we see going on here. And that is not happening in two. It's both going out in each tube, so that's not, it's not possible. <clears throat> All right, number 34. We got a moon phase diagram here, and we got it at four various positions. We're looking down at the North Pole on a date. Um, May 10th is shown to us here. Which photograph shows the appearance of the moon as viewed by an observer in New York State on May 17th, 2000? Okay, so we got the 10th here. We know it's going to take 28 days to go all the way around Earth, approximately 28 days. And so May 17th, right, from May 10th, that's seven days. And that's one quarter of the 28 days it takes to go all the way around. And so we're going to be looking at that position over there to go one quarter to the 17th. Now, what we're asked in this question here is we're asked which photograph shows the appearance of the moon, right? So first we had to figure out that this was the position we needed to look at. So coming from the Earth, looking at that position of the moon, keep in mind we are going to have our line of sight cut off as we've done in class, right? Boom, we're only going to see the half that's facing us. Here we've got 100% of that sunlit surface is facing the Earth, and so that would be the full moon here. Okay, I think it's worthy of noting, this is May 10th, and so, you know, that would be the 17th and forward here throughout the year. It's not possible that the diagram would look like this with the North Pole, because what they're showing us, right, night and day, they're showing us they're going right through the North Pole, and we should know from class that this only happens on 321 and 921. So this was a mistake that got past some people down at the regions, right? 321 and 921 are the only days where the light goes right through the North Pole. And I don't want that to throw anybody off. So we're going to bring attention to that. That Remember, this is a good way to, you know, this is good review for a question that doesn't necessarily ask this information. Um, these dates, right? Those are the two dates where Earth could look like that. All right. Anyway, <clears throat> moving on. 35, we got a diagram below that shows a sample of rubidium 87. Okay. Uh, here we go. The whole thing is in this light texture. Which diagram represents the correct proportion of rubidium-87 to its decay product, strontium-87, after two half-lives? Okay, and look, strontium here, they're going to show us it with the diagonal texture. So, in the first choice here, we've got half and half. And that would happen, happen after one half-life, right? We've got half of the original mass of the rubidium left and half of the decay product. So, what we're looking for for in this question is two half-lives. So in the second half-life, we're going to take this remaining rubidium and we're going to cut it right in half and have half of it left. And that's what we see here in choice two. So there's our answer to that. That is the last question in part A. We're going to now move on to part B1, which is still multiple choice sections. And uh, so here we go. 
We're going to base our answers to 36 through 38 on the Bach diagram below, which shows the landscape uh, features associated with the meandering stream. We've got WX here is the location of a cross section of the stream. We've got location A here. It indicates a landscape feature. All right. Uh, looking at 30, question 36, it says the landscape feature at location A is best described as. All right, at A here. All right, this is an old, this is the old, you know, part of a stream development. We see we got this oxbow lake here. We got these very well developed meanders. And one of the other things we're supposed to remember is a floodplain. So there, A is right in the middle of the floodplain. Now, if you just think about it common sense wise, when this area, when this stream floods, it's going to flood in here. And a plain is just a flat area, right? And so here we've got an air place that floods, and it's a plain, so there, land, flood plain. Number 37, it says, which particle of quartz shows evidence of being transported the farthest distance by the stream? So if we're talking about transporting it, stream transport, we're going to get stream abrasion. And one of the things that we should remember is that the more and more abrasion happens, the more rounded our particles are going to get. And 38, cross section that best represents the shape uh, of the stream bottom at WX. So we're going to go in and we're going to see exactly where we are. WX is coming around this curve here. We can see the texture that they've put in here to represent the erosion that's going to be taking place, the little embankment that we have here um, versus you know, over, you know, this is over here at by W, whereas here at the inside of that curve at X, right, there's going to be deposition taking place. So we should see a deeper channel at closer to W in our profile and our cross section than we see see over at X. And we take a look here, and boom, right off the bat, we see number one. We've got a deep channel by W and a shallow channel by X. Fantastic. All right. Uh, we're going to base 39 and through 42 on this geologic cross section uh, below a region of Earth's crust. We got layers A through E here. They've been labeled. We got two index fossils shown in the uh, diagram as well. All right, number 39. What caused the valleys and ridges in the area? So we've got a couple of ridges here, and we got some valleys between the ridges. Now, essentially, as you can see, the, these areas were all once, you know, nice like, you know, nice full form strata and now we got stuff that's missing. Yeah, you know, some of it that's missing, you know, that would have reason it is missing is that weathering and erosion took place and got rid of it, right? So when we look at our answer choices here, um, choice three where it says some rock layers are more resistant to weathering and erosion than others, right? That's the only reason why these still remain. They've resisted the weathering and erosion and so they're still there. Number 40, which list of rock layers best matches the deposited sediments from which they were formed? All right, so we're looking at our list here. We see that generally we're asked about some of the, the processes by which they formed and or their size of their materials. Okay, so we got we have a mixture of many things here that they've they've chosen as the criteria to match these rock layers. Well, when we look here, layer A, that map symbol, you know, we got to use the reference table. When we look up the map symbol, that one would represent limestone, which is a precipitance of biologic origin, or it could be cemented shell fragments. Its composition is made out of calcite. So we can get calcite precipitants, and, uh, or we could get uh, cemented shell fragments. Okay, uh, what else? We've got B here, it looks like this map symbol there. And so when we look that up, that's for shale. Boom, right here. We see it, uh, a clay-sized particle. Most, it's made up of mostly quartz and feldspar and some clay minerals. Uh, you know, probably some micas in there. Uh, let's see here, what we got. Next, we're back to limestone. All right, so what we are looking at in our answer choices so far, we should be able to get a pretty good idea as to which one of these. All right, so A, we know it is limestone, and at calcite precipitates, that works. A, plant remains. That's, uh, that's going to be for, for coal, not necessarily for limestone. And 
Let me look over here, right? The plant remains that was for the coal, and that was not the map symbol we had in that region. So, so far, one with calcite precipitants, that could be our limestone, the clay sized particle, that could be our shell, and then we had another layer of limestone. Boom. And so, D, it's shell fragments. Uh, look at that. We got all different kinds of limestone, and this one's got these shell fragments in it. Looks like one is actually perfect. We don't even need to uh, continue looking at the other ones. Okay. And I think, you know what, that'll probably do it for this recording. Ten minutes. Perfect.